Welcome to another episode of Airgun Detectives. I'm your host, JC. Today, we're going to take the mystery out of the Weinreck HW97. It's an under-level spring piston air rifle, and this one's in 22 caliber. But before we get going on this, do me a favor and hit the little subscribe button down there. If you haven't subscribed, I appreciate that. It helps the channel. Don't forget to check out my website at www.airgundetectives.com. I've got all kinds of things. I have these new t-shirts. Check those out. have those in a few colors. I'm trying to always come up with something just a little different. I also carry the Generation 2 bipods now. Airgun Detectives own exclusive. Specifically designed for your brake barrels and your underlevel air guns. Also, don't forget I hooked you guys up with that discount code uh, with the firearm guards, too. Uh, I'll leave you a link below. But don't forget, air gun is your discount code. You get free shipping on those. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to the subject on hand. This is our HW97. As I said, this one's in 22 caliber. It's a spring piston under level right here. There's a little button release in the front, and this pops down, and you just cock it that way. This one's very ambidextrous, which is nice. If you look at this breech opening, it's got the same distance on both sides. So whether you're a right-hander or a left-hander, it makes it easy to get your finger in there. Especially, that's kind of why I like the 22 caliber, too. Those pellets are a little easier to handle. Anyway, the stock on this is just absolutely gorgeous. What do you want from German engineering? And you probably didn't know, but Weinreck, they are the oldest German air gun uh, manufacturing company. The oldest one. Anyway, this has a raised cheek piece. It's got this beautiful inlaid here. The bluing on this gun is just sensational. I mean, it is just gorgeous. And then they also have this beautiful muzzle brake on the end. It's not a suppressor. It's just a muzzle brake. This gun's not very loud, as you'll see. Anyway, just the way it is. They also feature the world famous, in my opinion, the best trigger you can get on an underlever or a brake barrel air gun, by far, is this record trigger, R-E-K-O-R-D. It's a match grade trigger, and it's just, it's incredible. It's the best trigger, believe me. Um, the gun itself is about 40 inches long overall. The barrel itself is only just under a foot. It's like 11.8 inches. You have the 11 millimeter uh, dovetail for your scope. This does not come with any optics. You'll just have to put an aftermarket scope on it. The gun weighs about eight and a half pounds. They also claim the velocity on these is about 755 feet per second. They say maximum velocity. So that's gonna be depending on, I'm sure, um, what weight of pellet that you're gonna put in. But the gun is set up for Target shooting, small game, and pest control. And like I said, this is an absolute beaut. But let's take it through our usual test. Let's see how well it performs after we run it through our gamut, and then we'll come back and talk about it. And these retail for about $600. Okay, $600. But you're talking one very fine air rifle that's German made. So let's see how well it performs, come back and talk about it. Okay, let's see how our HW97 does over the chronograph. Now, these rifles aren't overly pellet picky, but I did go through a lot of pellets to see what were the best performing pellet. One of the best performing pellets in this is the H&N, the Field Target Trophy. They're a 14.66 grain pellet. Uh, it also did well with um, the GTOs, 11.75 grain. The Meister Kuglins did well with those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot five across the crony with the most accurate pellet, which is the uh, Field Target Trophy. We'll average that out, get your foot-pounds of energy. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to show you on the screen how it did with a couple other pellets, uh, just so you know. So let's shoot uh, five shots, and we'll average that out. These things are really easy to cock, just so you know. All right. So shot number one. That's 700. And shot number two, 689. Shot number three, 695.
shot number four. Keep in mind, I have about 100 shots through this gun. Okay. So it will smooth out. That's 694. And one more shot. Number five, so we can average. And last shot. 698. Okay, so there's your average feet per second for our 14.66 ground and our foot-pounds of energy. Now take a look at See how well the GTOs did? Those are pretty impressive as well. The Meisterkuglin. And then last but not least, we just did some Crossman Premier hollow points, and that's how they did. All right, stay tuned for the next segment. All right, let's do a little accuracy test with our HW97. Hey, I want to also mention, I want to thank uh, Splatterburst for supplying us with these targets. This target right here, it's one in the middle. This is the one we're actually using. It seems a little bigger on screen, but this target right here is going to be one we're using today. We're also going to be shooting the uh, field target trophies, the H&Ns, the 14.66 grain. They um, have the edge on all the other pellets as far as accuracy goes in this gun. So we'll shoot five shots. Um, if I screw up, it's me, not the gun. We'll go from there. All right. Shot number one. What's nice about these rifles too is they're ambidextrous. Even the breech opening is equal on both sides. All right, let's see what we can do. We're shooting our usual 20 yards. We we'll take a quick look. Go ahead. All right. That's one. I'm a little wobbly today. A little shaky today. It's not caffeine because I don't drink coffee. Uh, anyway, that's one. That's two. Three, that was me. That one was me, because I'm moving side to side. It's all right, though. Let's go. And number four. Notice that went to the same hole as the first two. That third one was totally me. If this one goes through that same hole, in the beginning, I'm throwing the other one out. It's not fair to the gun. <clears throat> yep, went through the same hole. That proves to you that that slight miss, that was my fault. All the rest of them, four out of five of them went through the same hole, so that was me. I'm throwing that one out, not fair to the gun. The accuracy on this thing is unreal. It really is. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's test the performance on the trigger on our HW97. Now, let me tell you, these are probably the most difficult triggers in the world to adjust. I'm totally kidding here. They're probably the easiest triggers you're ever going to adjust. You see this? There's one screw on this. One screw. Basically, if you want a harder pull trigger, you turn the screw in. You want a softer trigger, you turn the screw the opposite the clock, you bring it outward, and that lightens up your trigger. It's that easy. All right, so let me see what we have this set at. We'll show you the performance here. All right, we've got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge here. Safety's off. See how well we do. One pound, four tenths of an ounce. One pound, four tenths of an ounce. Yeah, I have this dialed in because we're doing the accuracy and I wanted more of a target trigger. But it doesn't take much, but a couple of turns, you can stiffen that up a little bit uh, for your uh, hunting purposes when you're in the field. Because you probably don't want that quite that light of a trigger when you're hunting. You want a little bit heavier. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Okay, my favorite part, the plinking. 
We're our usual distance, we're right about 40 yards. Take a quick look. You can see what we're shooting there. Got a couple of steel eggs, a couple 12 gauge shotgun shells um, on their sides, and even have a 223 shell. So we're going to try to hit those. Try our luck. We're going to use the 14.66 field target trophies again. Most accurate pellet. From this distance, my holdover, or I should say under, whatever, it's uh, going to be halfway between the first mill dot and dead center. So just that little distance in between. So I got to aim right in between there. And that should give us what we're looking for. We're well, about to find out. All right. We'll start with the shotgun shell on the right hand side. Yep, seems like the right spot. This thing, I'm telling you, is stupid accurate. It's crazy. Okay, see if we can hit the next one before I open up my mouth. Yep. All right, how about the 223 shell? Let's get that between the eggs. Now that's going to be a shot. I'll take it. All right. Whether I hit a little wood in front of it or not, I'll still take it. We knocked it over. All right, let's hit the eggs. We just want to see what type of impact we got from this type of distance. Not bad. And last but not least, the other little leg. Yeah, that hits pretty good. All right then. Let's go wrap this up with the conclusion. All right, let's wrap this up with our conclusion. Well, how did our HW97 do? Amazing, but did we really think it wouldn't? This is really one awesome gun. It is so solid to shoot. Very little recoil, not a big recoil, just very smooth operating gun. It's easy to cock. The safety on this, by the way, is automatic, and it's right up here, and you just push it off with your thumb. But every time you cock the gun, it engages the safety. So, let's talk about a little bit about the negatives. I don't have any. There's no negatives on this gun. Um, you could say the price, but $600 for a gun like this? No. And just so you guys know, I purchased this gun. I purchased it from Mike Mellick. Um, and I paid right around $600 for it, and it came completely tuned. He tuned it for me before I got it. When you buy one of these type rifles from Mike, he includes a tune with it, and his price is roughly the same. So if you're interested in that, just uh, go to Flying Dragon uh, Air Rifles. Check out his website or give him a, give him a call in, uh, if there's something you're interested in. It took me about nine months to get this rifle. I ordered it like over nine months ago, just so you know. But let's talk about the positives on this gun. The positives, let's start with, is this trigger. The trigger is, the record trigger is amazing. I think it is the best trigger made, okay, when it comes to brake barrels under liver rifles, by far. The gun itself, incredibly accurate. It's not over pellet picky. It's not. In fact, um, look at these targets. Go ahead and take a look at these targets I got up here. Okay, first is our H&N. Those are our favorite pellets for this gun. The H&N um, Field Target Trophy, the 14.66. As you can see in my practice ones, I got a .16 center to center group there. Not too far off from what we got today. We got the .14 because I definitely am throwing out my error because I'm not going to penalize this gun because of I flinched. Anyway, that's just me. Okay, look at the GTOs here. The GTOs, those are the non-lead. Those actually perform quite well too. That was a .18 center to center. And those uh, GTOs, like I said, they're the non-lead 11.75 grain. So those actually would be a pretty good option for you too. You wanna get the velocity up there. The uh, Meisterkuglins, they weren't bad. Uh, the 14 grain, 
we had a point two two um, centered to center on those. And then we even tried the inexpensive Crossman Premier hollow points, the 14.3 grains, and we still ended up with a 0.63 center to center. So, it, like I said, it's not very pellet picky. So you know roughly you're going to get anywhere between 14 to top 18 foot-pounds of energy out of this depending on what type of pellet you used. And that has to do with weight, style, shape, as you can tell. So this gun's going to be really good for pest control and small game. And then other than that, it's an incredible target gun. This just, well you saw what I was shooting um, from 40 yards away. The shotgun shells, and those are about the size of a nickel if you think about the size of a 12 gauge shotgun shell. So the accuracy on this is absolutely incredible. And as I said before, for six hundred dollars, yeah, you might be you might be best off if you're going to buy two cheap guns or two less expensive guns. I shouldn't say cheap; none of them are really cheap. But two less expensive guns, you might want to save your money and just buy one of these German-made because these are incredible. They really are. And like I said, it's easy to cock, and just the overall operating is just really smooth. So how would I rate that? You guessed it, five stars, without a doubt. This is a five-star rifle. Like I said, this was a long time coming. I had ordered this over nine months ago and uh, finally got it. But this is going in my personal collection. So no, I'm not selling this one. But I am selling some other stuff. So check out the website because I do have some of my inventory that I continue to post on there. When it goes, it goes. Because, you know, I only have pretty much one of everything. And when they're, when they're gone, they're gone. So check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. Um, got these new t-shirts out. Check them out. Anyway, you have my Generation 2 bipods, and I apologize for when the first shipment came in. They sold out so fast, but I've got um, many more coming in, so hopefully we can take care of all you guys out there that want them. All right, with that, uh, don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. So until next time, be safe. I hope your families are all healthy and doing well, and happy shooting. All right, again, until next time, take care.